Hey everyone, welcome to The Well. I'm so glad that you're joining us. And if this is your very first time joining us here, I just wanna welcome you here. My name is Jenna and I serve on the team here and I just love the community that we have here. We have people that join us every single week from everywhere and you are a part of this family. Well, hey, we've got an incredible new series planned for you today and my prayers are that God would speak to you through it. So right now, let's go to worship. was buried beneath my shame who could carry that kind of weight it was my turn till I met you I was breathing but not All my failures I try to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name glad to be back with you guys. It's a new year and a new series and we're excited about that and we hope you are as well. If this is your first time with us, thank you for taking the time to check us out and for doing so we have a special gift for you. All you have to do is click the connection card link in the description, fill it out and we will send you a $5 Starbucks gift card. If one of your new goals this year is to get connected more in the church, we have a couple amazing community groups that you can get involved in. 
At The Well, we believe that life is meant to do with others, not alone. If you want to join us, there's a link for that too in the description. Fill that out and someone from our team will get back to you with some more information. If one of your goals is to get more involved, we also have volunteer opportunities of how you can serve here at The Well and also in our community. You can find that in the connection card and fill that out also. Hey, at this moment, I'd like to transition and go into our giving segment. At The Well Church, we believe what the Bible teaches, that it's better to give than it is to receive. And let me tell you, last year you guys gave. You gave of your time, talents, but additionally, you gave financially. And because of that, last year over $500 was given to assist ending sex trafficking slash slavery through Saving Innocence. Over 100 children and students and their families were fed this summer through our No Hunger Summer event donations with Children's No Hunger Fund. We extended resources to people affected by the Bobcat Fire. We blessed over 100 students and families at Tamarisk Elementary with a Thanksgiving meal. We built our digital infrastructure to meet the needs during COVID-19 and to further God's kingdom to more homes. And together for Christmas, we fulfilled the wish list of 15 families that would go without. But instead, they felt love, joy, peace, and hope that Jesus brings. So this year, 2021, we want to help change more lives by being like Jesus, doing what Jesus did so they can have the life he promised. Thank you to those who are already generous, but if you're new and you would like to partner with us, we have three easy ways that you can give. The first way you could text the Well of AV to 77977 and follow the link there. You can go to our website and click give, or you can mail your gift to PO Box 902031, Palmdale, California 93590. All right, friends, get a pen and paper and be ready as Pastor Juan kicks off our new series, Who Will You Be in Five Years? Enjoy the message. Meet Billy. In five years, Billy will have spent 605 days sleeping and two and a half full days brushing his teeth, hopefully. He will have sat in traffic for nine full days. Billy hates traffic. And in five years, he will have spent 433 days working. Social media will have taken up 152 consecutive days of his life. He will have walked 3,650 miles and spoken 29.2 million words, hopefully good ones. In five years, Billy will have spent 76 days eating and drinking. Billy loves dessert. Two and a half years out of the five will be spent consuming media with 228 days spent watching TV. Billy is messy. He will have spent 152 days cleaning. And in five years, he will have spent roughly $40,000 on food, 40 days shopping, and 50 days socializing with the homies. Welcome to you in five years. Hello everyone and happy new year to you and Welcome to The Well Church, especially those of you that are joining us for the first or maybe the second time. Welcome home. Come on, everybody. Let's welcome them to the family by sending some hearts. Come on, let's light it up. Let's turn it red out there. Yes, let's see those hearts. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Listen, I want you to know that we have been praying for you for a long time, and we feel it's almost like having a kid. You know what I'm talking about? You know, you, you've been talking to your kid through, through the, the stomach for months, and now finally, they're all grown up and you're joining us for church. Isn't that awesome? All right, well, today we're kicking off a brand new series and we're calling it, we're using a question here and we're calling it, who will you be in five years? So we're gonna be spending some time in the beginning of this new year, 2021, asking you, who will you be in five years? Come on, so take a little trip with me, if you will. And imagine right now, right now where you're sitting down or maybe you're on a treadmill or you know, you're listening to this on, on your way to work. If you could picture your age in front of you as this giant number, like imagine that someone brought you balloons, right? And it's on your birthday and they were spelling the number of your age. So picture that. And now go five years forward and picture that number and try 
to picture yourself at that age. Try and see in your mind if you can see yourself in five years. You know, a little bit over five years ago, I was just 35 years old, and now I'm on my way five years from now to be in my mid 40s. Can you believe that? I know I don't look that old, I know. <laughs> Listen, I'm really excited about it though, and you wanna know why? Because my 30s were great. You know, I love them, and I'm looking forward to my 40s to see what adventures and what memories that we can create. And I hope that, that you're excited about you in five years. I hope you're excited about that next season of your life and, and that you believe that God's already gone before you into the new year. You know, I think sometimes though, when it comes to the new year and all of our planning for change and all of our hopes for transformation, the problem is oftentimes we think too small. You know, I heard a pastor once say that most of us underestimate what we can do in the long term, but we overestimate what we can do in the short term. I mean, it sounds pretty familiar, right? And I think that's most of us, right? We look at it a short period of time and we think that we can do so much in the short term. And then we look at a long period of time, like five years, and we underestimate what we can actually accomplish if we just stick with it. See, the trouble is so many of us have tragically short attention spans and, and we, we like the stick with itness. You know, this, is, this thing is just evaporating from the younger generations. And some people just jump ship the moment that they're not happy anymore. And, and we, we all jump ship the moment that we're not ecstatic anymore with our goals or with our dreams. And we just don't stay with stuff long enough to really see significant impact. Now, how can any of us make an impact in a community or in anyone's lives if we don't give ourselves long enough to hit our stride? I mean, I wonder if the same isn't true in so many different situations and certainly relationships and many other areas of our lives. You see, we overestimate what we can do in the short term and we underestimate what we could do in the long term if we just stick with it. You know, so that is the acorn in this series, if you will. You know, hopefully it's going to grow into an oak tree out of it. And this is the heart behind this series that we're getting started today. Who will you be in five years? And we're not just going to start a new year going, okay, okay, you know, here's, here's what's on the line between me and 2021. Here's what I'm going to do in the next 12 months. No, 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 no. Instead, we're going to think bigger than that. We're going to go out and, and we're going to say this, okay? Who could I be by the time it's January 1st, 2026? You know, if I get after it, if I, if I give it all I've got, if I trust the God who made the heaven and the earth and who is for me and not against me, who gave me his son, right, Jesus, who gave me his spirit that's alive inside of me, who could I really be 60 months from now? So that's the question that's on our heart. So if you have a Bible, please join me in the book of Romans. We're going to go to chapter 13. And if you don't, don't worry about it. We're going to go ahead and put the scriptures on the screen for you. Okay, so Romans chapter 13 is what we're going to be today. And so this is what Paul says, and I'm going to read out of the message translation. And this is what Paul said. But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted. All right, I mean, <laughs> is that this, you know, maybe describing some of you right now? Absorbed? I mean, darn it, right? I'm, we're like five words into this and I'm already convicted, absorbed and exhausted in what? Well, let's continue reading what Paul said. Taking care of all your day-by-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about to be over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. Notice there's an exclamation point there. So what is God doing? God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work that he began when we first believed. Man, I wish I could take some time and, and talk to all of you right now about how salvation occurs in three phases. About how when you get saved initially, that's called justification, where you are saved from the penalty of sin where one day when you get to heaven, you're going to be saved from the very presence of sin in a process of your salvation called glorification. But in between salvation and that time, glorification is a phase that is called 
sanctification, where you are being saved from the power of sin day by day. And as you yield yourself to God, you know, you are set apart to holiness and watch God do his wondrous works among you. But I I don't want to talk about that today, okay? So let's go back to verse 13 and what it says. See, we can't afford to waste a minute, but, but not, and not even squander, you know, these precious daylight hours that we have in frivolity and indulgence, you know, in sleeping around and, and dissipation and in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. I mean, it says, get out of bed and get dressed. In other words, don't loiter and linger. You know, does that describe somebody that you may know in your life? Right? Hey, don't elbow them. <laughs> don't elbow them. You know, loitering and laying around. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of like hanging out and, and waiting until the very last minute. You know, they say these things. You know, those people say these things. You know, I'll, I'll serve God when I'm older, right? I want to have some fun right now, Pastor, while I'm young. And, and this is when I'm young and free. And, and I want to go and I want to go out and, and I want to see the world, right? I mean, just watch. Eventually, I'll get right. And, and, and don't wait until the very last minute, though. I'm going to say that right now. Dress yourselves, the Apostle Paul says, in Christ and be up and about. Come on. You know that's good, right? I mean, Paul says, dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. You know, I love how the New King James Version, the translation says it this way. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. So would you pray with me? Let's pray right now. Close your eyes, bow your head, wherever you're at, unless you're driving, okay? (laughs) God, we are uh, just so thankful for the way that you refresh us, that you energize us just to even read your word today. And we pray even now that that you would bless the reading of your word, uh, which you have promised to do. You said heaven and earth will pass away, but your word never will. And so these things are eternal. You know, there's something different about this. And God, there's a lot of words out there that we can read and listen to, like, you know, on CNN, MSNBC, and, uh, you know, text messages and tweets. And there's a lot of words out there, but there's something different about these words. Uh, There's something eternal about these words, God. And I pray that even as they are now cutting through and dissolving uh, things, you know, melting hardness in our hearts, quickening us to hear what you're doing, our lives, God, sometimes feel so urgent. You know, our lives feel so important. It's easy to be frantically running to and fro, absorbed and exhausted in in, in all the day-to-day stuff that we forget. We forget to look up and realize that you're doing something in our lives and you're inviting us, God, to to be a part of something. And so, Heavenly Father, we don't want to miss out on anything. We want all that you have for us in 2021. We We want all of it this year. We want that in the next five years, God, and we want that forever. We don't ever want you to look at our lives and say that it could have been if only you would have. We wanna tap into all of that. So God, we ask you to help us be in the moment, to be alert and about and present, dressed in Christ Jesus, making no provision for the flesh. And we ask that if a single person has come you know, in the midst of us right now, looking at this, at this live broadcast, who doesn't know you, who is without God, who is without you, Jesus, without hope in this world, that whatever they're looking to fill the hole in their hearts, whether it's uh, possessions, whether it's accomplishments or relationships or even substances, whatever they do to dull that ache, that's, that, that throbbing sense that they were made for, we pray right now that through the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would draw them to yourself and that they would be saved this day. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone who agrees says, Amen. Come on, put Amen out there or some hearts and some likes. Yes, put it out there on the screen. Let me see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, perfect. All right. So let's go back to our question Who will you be in five years? You know, five years is enough time to accomplish quite a bit, right? You know, I sat down this week and, you know, I just got to thinking of, you know, what someone could do if they got really serious and they applied themselves for five years. And man, so I made these two lists, you know, uh, and one's positive and one's negative. All right. So if you're ready to see the list, come on, 
Give me some thumbs up. Come on, light it up. Uh, participate. You guys need to be jacked up, excited. It's the new year. Come on. First service of, of 2021. So five years, again, is a long time to do a lot of good, right? But you could also do a lot of evil. You know, so on my positive list, this is what I wrote down. I wrote down that you could uh, basically be fluent in a new language. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you want, you can learn French. You know, I, wa I want to learn what it means in, in the movie Home Alone. I saw Home Alone, you know, we watch Christmas movies, and there's this part where Kevin's sister says to him, Kevin, you are what the French call less incompetent. <laughs> Right? I mean, tell me that doesn't sound cool, right? I mean, you can learn French in five years, and it's easier than ever before. I mean, two words, ready? Rosetta Stone. I mean, some of you could be trilingual, right? I mean, there's so much that is out there that we could take advantage of, so much more than, than watching cat videos or whatever you watch on, on TikTok, uh, that new dude dog face, right, For, with, the, with the cranberry uh, juice and all that stuff. Anyways. <laughs> I want you to know that there was a day, I remember there was a day when, when it would be uncommon just to meet someone who didn't even speak other languages. Now, fortunately for me, I mean, I speak two languages, but in five years, if I wanted to, I could, I could, five years from now, I could speak another language. I mean, how about you? Maybe you could get a degree, right? You could, you could say, you know what? I'm going to go back to school. Five years? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, you go through high school, right? Or at least most of us go through high school in four years and, and you can take night classes. You can uh, do internet courses or go to community college, you know, through Zoom. I mean, you could five years from now have a whole different world of opportunity opened up to you if you took advantage of it. And, and not just like a, a formal degree. I mean, listen, I mean, I'm not against formal education. I think that many of you are gonna be called to go to college. And, and to get a degree and to enter into the business world and occupy that space for Jesus. And that's cool, right? And, and have, you're going to have the pedigree from the eye of, of whatever community you're entering into. To be able to do something, though, and produce wealth even and to pour into the kingdom of God. To be generous and to do a lot of good. Can I get an amen out there, right? I know some of you are like, yes, that's what I want. But we all know... Sometimes that in this day and age, right, 2021, a degree is not a be-all, end-all guarantee to get a job. I mean, there's a lot of people who have degrees but can't find work with the degree that they sacrificed and worked their tails off so hard to get, right, to achieve. And some of you may, may not get a degree, but perhaps, listen to this, perhaps in five years, you could have a new skill, New skills are cool, right? Five years is, a, is long enough, I believe, to get a skill at something to where you have the aptitude, I think. You know, certainly five years of pouring yourself into something. You know, it's like I tell my kids, you know, I have a 21, a 17, and a 16-year-old, and I say, look, you know, I hope you go to college. Well, some of them have, and one of them has earned already a, a skilled, a skill, I should say. And, but I tell them this, I tell them, look, it's okay to get a degree, but the key, here's the key isn't just to go to college and get a degree, huh? Well, they said, what do you mean? I said, the key is to get a marketable skill. Here's what I mean by that. You know, it's a skill that's, that there's a market for. You see, you need to figure out what you love to do, what you're passionate for, and then find out how to get people to pay you to do it. See, that's the key. Figure out what you've got a passion for. You know, God gave you, listen to me, God gave you something that to be great at. And you need to figure out you know, how you can get a place where people will pay you to do that. And you'll do it so well. Listen, you need to do it so well that they'll want to listen to you. Sort of like what you're doing today with me. <laughs> at least that's what I hope. And, and as you do it, you do it really well and they want to listen to you and, and you're going to have this, these natural opportunities to point people, yes, to Jesus, no matter what that platform is. And five years, five years is enough time and that you could be at a place where, where you're like, you know what, I just, I just feel like I'm just maybe not in the industry I want to be in. Okay, well, you could in five years from now be in a different place if you get after it. Or, or here's the other option, the alternative, you could just binge watch on not, you know, Netflix and, and for the next five years. And I mean, it's completely your choice to do that. Oh, wait a minute. I jumped ahead. That's actually on my negative list. Darn it. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. All right. Sorry, but okay. Don't, here's the point. Don't 
binge you know, Netflix the next five years. All right, how about this? Um, you could master a sport. You know, I mean, if you're if you're into running, right, or you want to, you know, take up running, and maybe easily in five years you can run a marathon. You know, probably do an Ironman. How about that? I mean, you can just go nuts with this. Is what I'm trying to say. Five years, if you give yourself over to it. I mean, there are running communities. You know, you can look them up on Facebook or other social media, you know, uh, outlets and. You can join those groups and meet up with them and whatever they're going to go run. Of course, be safe, COVID safe. I mean, it could be amazing. I tell you what, you know what? I really hope you do take that. And I hope that five years from now, I get a letter or you text me or you Facebook message me, whatever. And you're like, you know what, Juan? I heard that talk you gave on, on January 3rd, 2021. I saw it on YouTube or Facebook and, and I set a goal to do an Ironman. And now I want you to come watch me do it. That would be cool. Listen, you invite me and I I promise you, I'll come and watch you and I'll probably hand you the bike or or your goggles, right? Not your speedies. No, (laughs) I'll hand you the goggles before you go swimming, okay? Think about how good you could be. I mean, you could be Michael Phelps, all right? (laughs) In five years, listen to this. Maybe you could uh, own a house. You know, you can own a house long enough to where it's good financially, you know, uh, to move or to sell it. Uh, in most cases, especially I know here in Southern California where we're at, five years owning, I mean, you could be in a place where you could sell the house or flip it or upgrade it or whatever. I mean, five years is long enough to do that. Let's say you're a kid, right? You're like, okay, Pastor, well, I'm under 18. I mean, you could set a goal of saving money. I mean, for something that's too expensive. But, but how, how do I do that, Pastor? Well, if you saved, listen to me, if you saved a dollar a day in five years, you would have $1,825. I mean, I, I, I'm a, if I'm a little 10 year old kid, right, with, with almost two grand, I mean, I mean, listen, don't forget to tithe though, okay? Don't forget to tithe on it, but you see what I'm saying? I mean, that's a good amount of money that you could do something great with in just a small period of time. Five years, five years. How about this one? You could read 60 books. If you do one a month and all you have to do is just, again, read one book a month, which boils down, uh, the, if the average length of a book is about 200 pages, to you only have to read six pages a day. I mean, how long does it take to read six pages? I mean, for my wife, maybe like three minutes. I mean, she's fast. For me, let's say a minute a page, okay? But let's say five minutes, six pages. I mean, what kind of list, listen, what kind of list could you crush in just five years. Maybe some biographies. I mean, you could read about uh, any president of the United States of America. You could read about uh, the Wright brothers, Amelia Earhart, uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, how about Maya Angelou, right? Or Ruby Bridges, who was a civil rights activist. Or, or maybe you could read something in sports. You could read about the great Jackie Robinson, right? Number 42. As you can tell, I love reading and I love reading broadly. I mean, you can learn so much. You can read 60 books, okay, in five years because listen, readers are leaders and leaders are readers. So you could do it. I know you could do it. You could read 60 books between now and half of this decade passing by. How about this one? Okay, I want, I want you to write this down. You could radically, let's write it down. I can radically transform my soul right? And grow closer to God than ever before. Wouldn't that be awesome to do? I mean, think about it. I mean, Jesus was only on this earth for three years. What if you gave, you know, the next five years over to seeking his face? I mean, he promised those that, that who seek me will find me. That's what he said. See the problem, ready? It isn't unanswered prayers, everyone. Oh, you know, pastor, I pray to God and, you know, he didn't answer me this one time that I prayed. And uh, you know what the problem is, everyone? The problem is that that prayer or prayers that we never prayed. Ah, right. I mean, how do you, how's God going to answer a prayer that you never prayed? I mean, how much peace do you think that we forfeit because we never go to God in prayer? But if for the next five years you sought God in prayer you really sought God in the scriptures, in the Bible. I mean, what about memorization of the Bible? You know, I hear people, well, I can't memorize the Bible. I mean, well, read it, right? What about reading the Bible? Has anyone out there ever read the Bible in an entire year? 
Oh man, let me tell you, I hear people say, oh, it's just so thick, Pastor. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> I mean, how many pages are in that thing, right? If you just read, listen to me, if you just read two chapters a day, and, and let me encourage you, I would make sure that you read one chapter in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament, all right? I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to bog you down a little bit if you just go through the book of Leviticus in a month. Otherwise, I mean, forget it. You're going to be like, that's just no Leviticus, all right? So remember the point, read an old and the new. You got to mix these two things together. But in the end of five years, hear me out, you're going to be able to read the Bible three times. I mean, do you know how much knowledge you're going to have if, if you read the entire Bible three times? Man, well, let me tell you, I mean, without a shadow of doubt, I mean, th you could be here doing this, okay? And more importantly, you, would, you could be more like Jesus. So remember, remember what Jesus did. Whenever Jesus got into a hard spot, what did he do? When he was in, you know, he would instinctually, and in his natural reaction, it was to pull out a scripture from God's word. You know, what, 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 what if every time, what if every, every time they, somebody bugged you or somebody, you know, just it just stressed you out. What if every time that you got tempted, how about this, that you got tempted to watch porn again or, or to get drunk on a Friday night again, or, or what if all of a sudden a Bible verse popped up because you had read it that morning or you had read it last week and, and, and it was just hidden in your heart now, right? Scripture just comes out of you. So now you're not going to sin against God's word because you have a sword in your hand like Jesus, who when the devil, listen to this, when the devil came against him, he would say, it is written, and he would fight the devil off. Okay, all right, so, so listen, that's just the positive list. There's also a negative list, okay? Five years from now, hear me out, you could still be going through you know, the final details of a horrifying, messy divorce because because of five years of neglecting your spouse. You could be partially, you know, through a prison sentence. I, I mean, that's kind of drastic. I don't know why I said that, but, but the prisons are full is what I'm saying. And five years from now, you could be just five years into maybe a 10 year, 20 year, or 30 year sentence, or God forbid a life sentence, right? And five years is my point here is that it's long enough to get the major, to get a majority, to get majorly addicted to drugs even into a life-threatening way. You know, five years is long enough to have worked five, six, or maybe seven different jobs that you partially applied yourself to before quitting or getting fired. Five years is long enough to rack up a mountain of credit card debt also, right? I know you guys just spent money that probably you shouldn't have been spending with credit cards and you got into a bunch of credit card debt. Maybe, maybe you, uh, through COVID, packed on an extra 30 pounds also, and you're like, oh my gosh, pastor, I got to lose this weight. Or maybe in five years, you could smoke 36,500 cigarettes. I mean, you don't need COVID, right? I mean, you could just kill your own self, right? And all you'd have to do to do that is smoke a pack a day. You want to know what's funny <laughs> about this? You know, I get asked sometimes, hey, pastor, you know, can I smoke cigarettes and still be a Christian? And when I say, like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, I don't understand your question. Yeah, well, like, you know, will it keep me from going to heaven if I smoke cigarettes? And I'm like, oh, no, it's, it's not. I mean, actually, it'll get you quicker to heaven much faster. It'll just, actually, it'll just kill you. So it's up to you. All right. So, <laughs> so here's the deal. I know I'm cracking myself up here. Five years is long enough to do a lot for good or for evil. That's my point. I mean, can we all agree on that, all right? Let me see some hearts. Let me see some likes. We can agree on that. See, by the time you get to five years from now, you will have had enough road that's been traveled for you to do a lot one way or another. And so this series, this series is all about, you know, let's, let's make good decisions. Let's make wise decisions. Let's get to five years from now and be pumped up about the choices that we have made. Now, just to clear things out, you know, this is just an introductory message, you know, and, and honestly, it's really just the tip of the spear. And so on to something to disappoint, ready? Did you know that the average American Jesus follower, okay, the average American Jesus follower only attends their church when they were open once to twice a month? I mean, that's sad. Actually, again, that stat is before the pandemic hit us. 
Now, nowadays, I would honestly say it's maybe, maybe once a quarter. I mean, if, if, or maybe they just totally have disappeared now. See, that's discouraging for me. You want to know why? As someone who spends hours preparing single messages like this, you know, that I give twice a week, I do a midweek service. Those of you that join me on Wednesday nights uh, and then the weekend, I mean, just so you know, if you didn't know that, this is the way it works. You know, sometimes I think about how, how most of you are only going to hear maybe just 20% of any given message. Why? Because maybe you showed up this weekend. Hey, welcome. Thanks for being here. But then you skip, skip, and then you go, oh, I got to watch. And then you watch, and then you skip, watch, watch, skip, 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 skip. Oh, wait, wait, it's Christmas. Oh, let me go back and, you know, I have a church I go to. And then you watch, and then you skip, skip, and then, oh, here comes Easter, and then you come back. Listen, I, I just want you to know that, that I think about how I've got a single message that I need to break up into multiple weeks for you because, come on, how much can you really accomplish in 30, 35, 40 minutes? I mean, so you're going to hear the introduction today to this series, but that's just all. That's, that's all I'm going to give you today, okay? You're going to hear, let's just prime the pump. Let's just ask the question. Let's just begin the conversation. And this is not even the appetizer yet. This is just, you know, wet the towel before the meal, okay? <laughs> so we're nowhere near the main course is what I'm saying. You know, I'm not even going to talk to you about the specials today, okay? This is just the appetizer. What I would ask is this that you would break that trend, that one that I just talked about, and join us every weekend of this series, okay? This entire series. And I just wonder, hear me out, I just wonder how different your life could be spiritually if you gather together online with friends or family at home with, with God's people for an uninterrupted period of time. I mean, they say, right, that it only takes about 30 days to make a habit. Because your brain, you know, has such a, uh, a plasticity to it. So, listen, you've tried the other way. Skip, 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 show up once in a while, right? And being very sporadic. What could happen if you made the commitment? I mean, what would happen? So my challenge to you would be to not miss a single week of this series and, and, and challenge you and encourage you to hear the entire message that I'm going to give broken up over the course of a number of weeks, okay? Five to be exact, actually four after today. So let me give you my entire message today in one single sentence, okay? Hope you're writing stuff down. I, I, mem I remember stuff more when I write it down. So listen, this whole message that I got to start the conversation in, in just one sentence, here it is. Here we go, ready? The ways you let in become the ways you are set in. I'm gonna repeat that for you. The ways that you let in become the ways you are set in. That's my message. That's it. That's it. Remember, the ways that you let in become the ways that you are set in. Listen, we all have ways, don't we? I mean, everyone has ways. I mean, if you, got, if you go to a big city and you're still using Google Maps, I, I just pity you. I feel sorry for you. I mean, it's a joke. You know, I give thanks to my wife. She's the one that taught me about ways because there's an awesome app and it's called Ways, spelled a little differently. Listen, they say God has his ways. I mean, God has his ways, but you do too. See, the Lord's ways may not be our ways because as the heavens are high above the earth, so the Lord's ways are high above our, ours past finding out. See, it's spelled differently though, okay? Again, God's ways, W-A-Y-S, and then ways. <laughs> they say God has his ways. You know, God has his ways, but you do too. And again, the Lord's ways may not be our ways because as the heavens are high above the earth, so the Lord's ways are high above ours past finding out. Okay, but here it is. He's not the only one with ways. You have your ways. I have my ways. See, our ways are how we choose to react. Our ways are the, are the ways that, that we choose to speak. Our ways are when we choose to insert ourselves and, and when we choose not to when we uh, uh, accept and, and when we decline, when we stay and when we go, our passions. I mean, your checking account even speaks about your ways. Your text messages, right? All the message history speaks about your ways. Again, you have your ways and I have mine. See, many of our ways, they were modeled to us, weren't they, by our parents. You know, our ways, you know, are, it's what we saw and what we adopted our ways because 
That's maybe how mom handled conflict. You know, that's how dad spent money. You know, that's how we saw it modeled for us, maybe even on television, right? Those of you that just spend hours watching TV. See, that's how we see it modeled for us, maybe on social media, right? On Instagram, on Facebook, our worldview, our ways, our actions, our words. What I'm trying to caution you is that the ways that you let in become eventually the ways that you are set in. You know, now sometimes, you know, people speak, you know, derogatorily about going through the motions. Oh, you know, I was just going through the motions, right? And, and not putting my heart into it. And let me just tell you something. Going through the motions is only a problem if you're going through the wrong motions. You see, getting stuck in your ways can either be the worst thing that could happen to you or the best thing. Regardless though, it's, it's not black and white. It's neutral, right? Getting stuck in your ways is a good thing if you get stuck in the right ways. Does that make sense to anybody out there? Hopefully, you know, give me some, some happy faces if, if it makes sense. So, so let me share with you four things, okay? This is, we're already at 30,000 feet. We're gonna start going down. Okay, so, and I need you to write this down, okay? So are you ready? All right, number one, time is not on your side. Time is not on your side. See, the first thing I want you to write down is time is not on your side. You know, twice in the text we read, the Apostle Paul brought the concept of time up. He said that 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 doesn't want us to, he doesn't want us to lose track of time. He wants us to be aware of the time instead. Then he said, the night's almost over, right? Dawn is about to break. He wants us to understand the timing of things. See, there's two Greek words I'm going to share with you right now for time. Two Greek words. One is chronos and the other is kairos. See, chronos is like, um, like we would have a, a, a chronograph, you know, function on a watch. You know, that's just generic time. And kairos means strategic time, right? Very specific. So chronos, again, is like, hey, uh, hey, uh, what time is it? Now, if, if you speak of kairos, though, it's not time in general. It's, it's very specific. Like when you're at the airport, I don't know if anybody's gone to the airport lately or whenever, and they say, Hey, we're boarding first class now. We're boarding the executive platinum and then we're boarding gold members and then we're uh, boarding the main cabin. Then finally, it's like all of us, right? Economy, economy. <laughs> you get my point. It's not just generic. Kairos is strategic time. I mean, this is about to open, you know, this is about to close. And, and when it's over, Paul, he said it. The night is about to be over. The dawn is about to break. He's referring to the end of our lives, which by the way, is hurtling towards you at breakneck speed. So listen to how David put it in Psalm 39. This is what he said. Indeed, you have made my days as hand breaths and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. You catch that? I mean, we're like the fog that, that appears outside, right, in the morning and then vanishes into thin air. Your life, you know, it, it seems so real right now, doesn't it? I mean, you're buying things, you know, you're, you're going and you're coming, you're driving, you know, you're hybrid around town and <laughs> I don't know, maybe, or maybe an F-150 and, and you're double clicking stuff on Instagram. But just before you know it, it's all going to vanish into thin air. You see, you will not be on this earth anymore. I mean, aren't you glad that you tuned into church this morning? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for making me feel good. <laughs> but listen, Psalm 90 puts it this way. 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80. I mean, 80 years. I mean, that's a long, long time, right? But even the best years, Psalm 90 continues and says, are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. And look at this part. Look at this part. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. I mean, I can see it now. I can see it now, right? Some of you, you're probably like 17, 18 years old, right? And you're or maybe 24 years old and you're like, not me, pastor. I mean, I'm in the prime of my life, right? You're going to blink. Let me tell you, you're going to blink and decades are going to pass you by. And the longer you live, right? Those of us that are in 40s, 50s, 60s, right? The faster we know, the faster it goes, right? And, and so listen to me. This is not, you know, or time, I should say, time is not on your side. And I like how Aristotle put it. He said, 
we should measure time in heart throbs. You feel that? Your heart throbbing? I mean, every time your heart beats, I mean, what a gift. And you're not guaranteed, right? It's gonna, it's gonna happen again and again and again. So five years, okay, let's think about that. Five years, I mean, who knows? You may not even live three. Five years, I mean, you may, you may be in the ground in six months. You know, our life, the apostle Peter said, and he quoted the, the, the prophet Isaiah. I mean, look at it. You know, he said, it's like the flower of the grass. Look it up. I want you to look up that scripture. You know, all of our beauty, all the buildings that we build and the bridges that, that we cross over, Oh, you know, look at, look at, right? We cross that chasm and, and we put our name in lights and lights and, and we look at this film, that film, and we look at this company and, and look, every single accomplishment we're talking, right? You know, we're, we're talking about, you know, whatever Napoleon accomplished, whatever Caesar accomplished, right? Back in the days, you know, we're talking about the founders, even of our great country, our great country, right? The United States of America, when they signed the Declaration of Independence, you know, all great things, but look, look at it again. It's all the flower of the grass. The grass withers, the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So time is not on your side. Your life is just like the grass. Your life is just like a flower, but through listening, okay, don't, don't, don't let me lose you, but through listening to God's word, we can tap into something that's eternal. Okay, so here's the second thing, okay? So first one again was, time's not on your side. Okay, I need you to write this down. And we're speaking of this idea of, of, again, who we're gonna be in five years from now, right? I want you to know this. Here's number two. The future you is simply an exaggerated version of the current you. <laughs> you see, we think about our future, right? Sometimes, you know, rather romantically. You know, it's this mysterious thing like, like, who am I going to be when I grow up? All right, you're going to be exactly like you, just exaggerated. If you want to know what you're going to be like in five years or in 10 years or, you know, after that and, and, and 20 years after that, I mean, just look at yourself with more miles on the odometer. <laughs> okay, like, what do I mean by that? I mean, if you're a kind person today, you're going to be kinder 5, 10, 20 years from now because the things, the, the person that we are, the character that who we are just deepens. You see, these things mature. If you're generous today, guess what? You're going to be more generous 5, 10, 20 years from now. I mean, picture just yourself being a more generous person that looks somewhat like you just, you know, got a little more leathery complexion. All right? <laughs> right. Now, the opposite is true also. If you're cruel, you're just you're just going to be more crueler still. If you're a harsh person, you're going to be harsher still. See, those things will just deepen down as it gets down into the cracks of who you are. And it hardens and it forms into, again, your character. See, if you are disciplined today, you're going to be more disciplined still. Here's, here's what I'm trying to get, get you to see. Is that, and, and by the way, I want you to know this. This makes the, the selection of, of a spouse even more important. Okay, don't forget that. Those of you that are single. See, most people are looking for the wrong things in people. They're looking at the flower, right? Being fooled by the grass and not understanding that the things like, like a fine wine, they get better with time, right? These things are the invisible attributes that are etched on the inside of a person's soul. But this isn't a sermon on, on helping you swipe right, okay? This is a sermon on, on who, you know, who we're going to be five years from now. You see, time doesn't change who you are. It reveals who you are, right? And it, and it makes, makes you more of who you are. See, time isn't going to change you. Or, 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 or you know, you say, oh, I'm going to be different in the future. Come on. No, you're not. You're going to be exactly like you are making choices today, just more set in those ways. And I'm going to need a scripture verse to back that up, right? Just for you. And I got three of them. Okay. So get ready. See, the book of Proverbs puts it this way. And it's speaking about seeking good. If you earnestly seek good and that's what you're going, that's what you're doing, right? You're looking for good in people, looking for the good in situations, looking for the good in life, living with a faith-filled optimism. Well, guess what? As you get older, 5, 10, 20 years, right? You're going to find favor. But if you're seeking trouble and you're seeking evil, 
If you're the first to find you know, the problem in any situation, the first to see the faults in people and, and you know, how, uh, how would we you know, know that, that that's true of you? Oh, well, you know, we just have to look at things you write down. For example, the comments you post, the statements you make, your emails that you send to people, your text messages, the quips, the retorts, the, all the little things, right, that you're shooting them out and the things that you snicker at. And, and, and if you're looking for evil, you're going to find evil. You're going to find trouble. But I love earlier in the book of Proverbs, you know, it, it talks about a rolling stone, right? Rolling a stone. And look at this. I love this verse. This is what it says. Whoever digs the pit will fall into it. Ah, see that? And he who rolls a stone will find it rolling back upon him. See, if there's a critical nature to you, if you have a wounded spirit, if you're rushing around to, to cast judgment on people you know, that are around you, well, Jesus put it best. You know what he said? I mean, that kind of critical spirit, it's going to boomerang back to you. You know, you are what you eat. In other words, you become like what you watch and you reap what you sow, the Bible says. And, and so future you, it's not so mysterious to any of us. It's the current you, but everyone say exaggerated, right? Exaggerated. That means here's the good news though. Okay. All right. Here's the good news. If you don't like what you're getting today, you can change what you're doing though. The action part of it. If you don't like what you're getting, write that down. If you don't like what you're getting, meaning five years from now, as you look forward, who do you want to become? Look, I know that, that some of you have gone through hard things. I'm not going to be naive to say that, you know, you haven't. And, and so when you look back, I mean, look, trust me, here's what I'm going to say. When I go back five years in our lives, Jenna and I, I mean, we have gone through some hard stuff. I mean, some life altering things in our lives also. Okay. But when you go back five years and you look forward, hear me out. Do you look forward to who you wanted to be by now? What kind of a person you hoped to be? What kind of character you hope to have? What kind of choices you were, you were going to make? If you're disappointed now, you're going to be more disappointed then. Let me say it this way, okay? So in case I confuse anybody, if you look back on your younger self and you're thinking, where's the guy? I mean, where's the girl that that, 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 that person hoped they were going to turn into? Well, the future's not going to change. You'll just be more exaggerated. So if you don't like, here we go. If you don't like what you're getting, you need to change what you're doing. You need to make some different decisions. You need to value some different things. You need to watch out what ways you're letting in before they continue to set in. You know, that's incredibly important. Don't miss that. You know, I heard uh, uh, another pastor, you know, once say that the evening of life, okay, the evening of life is determined by the morning of it. Isn't that good? You know, that lines up so well with what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 13 about the night being about to end, right? The dawn being about to come. You know, we're still living in the morning of life and we can make decisions before the evening comes. And, and if we're living in the evening of life, man, we can make decisions before that dawn breaks out. See, it's never too late. Hear me out, please. If you're feeling kind of down, listen, it's never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to not harden your heart, but to yield and to repent and to stop living for the flower and the grass, but to start living for Jesus. Come on, come on, somebody. You see some hearts and likes out there. We got to start living for Jesus. All right. So I got one last thing I need you to write down. Okay, one more. Hang there with me. We're going we're gonna to land this plane right now. And then we're going to just, you know, part this introduction here and we're going to leave it to be continued. So I hope you come back. Yes, I'm inviting you to come back. But let me leave you with this thought, okay? Ongoing consistency, write this down, ongoing consistency is much more important than short-term intensity, okay? See, how do, how do I want you to respond to this message, this whole series? I want you to respond with a measured determination, See, I'm not asking you and, and pushing you to start coming up with a list of stuff, right? Of ways that you're going to change. And, and because listen, th that is just so premature right now. I just, I just wanted to begin to talk, right? So that we could understand 
you know, this is going to be a lot to bite off. So remember, remember, okay, an ongoing consistency every time trumps short-term flared up intensity. Well, why is that the case, Pastor? Why are you saying that? Here's why. Because ongoing, steady, slow, measured consistency, it allows you to tap into what has been called the most powerful force in the universe. And that is, listen to this, I need you to Google this after and look up more what this is called. It's called compound interest. I mean, think about what, what Albert Einstein said on the subject of this. He said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. You know, he who understands it earns it. Now, he who doesn't though, listen, pays it. See, it's the same with credit card debt, right? Whether you're earning 20%, or you're paying 20%. It comes down to whether you understand the most powerful force in the universe and the power of steady consistency to build up and become strong over time. You know, one of the best ways that, that I heard, you know, what, how compound interest works or looks like is if you can imagine a series of dominoes. Okay, so check this picture out. It's a series of dominoes that, that increased in size. So if you took a domino, look at the little domino in the slide, and you start out with a tiny little domino on you know one that's maybe like five millimeters in in uh in tall right being tall and, and a millimeter in thickness and then you took 12 more dominoes so that your 13 dominoes were to grow one and a half times consistently every single revolution every domino one and a half times taller listen to this by the 13th domino at the very end you see how big that is you would increase in size all the way to the point where your last one is a meter tall and weighs 100 pounds. I mean, that is compound interest, y'all. That is exponential growth. The problem, ready? Ready for the problem so you can avoid it. For so many of us is that ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> We've all made it to March many times, right? Oh, new year, we're excited, yay! Happy new year, and we set these goals and we have dreams and March comes and, and we're just discouraged. Why? Because we wanna be where we set out to be by the end of January, right? January 31st, but, so what do we say? Oh, I, I just, I just wanna change, but, but I don't get it, or you know, I just tried that. Oh, you, pastor, I read the Bible once. Right? <laughs> Listen to me, please. I, I did not turn into a man of God overnight. That's a fact. You can ask my wife. Right? But, you know, pastor, right? It's just, it's frustrating. I hear, and, you know, isn't there a pill I can just take to lose weight? And isn't there some holy water I could just pour on it? <laughs> isn't there something I could just buy on Amazon, right? To melt it off? And, you know, why can't I just be a great husband, pastor? I mean, is there a marriage conference that I could attend and just take my, or let my wife go and she can come back? <laughs> the guys, no, sorry. You just got to start doing the dishes and quit being a jerk to your wife. Oh, hey, ladies, can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah out there? Ladies, I love you. I love you. And guess what, ladies? It's vice versa too, though. Come on, come on. It's, <laughs> the road has traveled both ways. <laughs> All right, listen. I've heard it all. Oh, I've tried that once. Oh, it didn't work out. And I just, I just don't understand. And, and oh, here's another one. <clears throat> Pastor, I tried saving money and, and it wasn't for me. And, and you don't understand my boss. Oh, that's a big one, right? He's just a, <clears throat> anyways, let's continue the message. All right. He, he didn't, listen, what's the problem here? Did he just not tell you how special you were like your mom did? <laughs> and, 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 you know, give you a reward for doing nothing? I'm sorry but life is tough. I'm with you in that. Listen, it's tough for all of us. Look, here's my point. You can't jump like that slide from the very first little domino all the way to the big domino, you know, all the way over here without going through here. You have to go through it. Remember, this is the next five years of your life if you want, if you want to get to this, okay? But if you start small and realize the power, again, of ongoing consistency, then you can accomplish anything. You know, I love how the great theologian C.S. Lewis, you know, said that, he said that good and evil both increase, both at compound interest. Ah, that's scary, right? And, and that is why the smallest, this is the point here, another one, the smallest decisions that we make in every way are of infinite importance. Oh, and by the way, just like that 13th domino, 
All right, at that point, it's three feet tall and 100 pounds. If let me show you guys something else. If I, I continued that paradigm, that that compound interest, if we were to continue, I, uh, I don't have room here, but if we were to continue to the 29th domino, okay, just 29 dominoes, that domino would be as tall as the Empire State Building in New York. I mean, just so you have a picture in your mind of what keeps happening. All right, here we are. So as I wrap up. I want to share with you one last story. It's about a study that was done in Australia, down under, about the effects of, of sunscreen and aging, believe it or not. I mean, we wouldn't know that we're here in California, right? So they took 900 people and the average age was 39, around my age, right? And they split these two groups up and, and one of the groups was told, hey, wear a high powered sunscreen, you know, wait for it, wait for it whenever it's sunny, Okay, not right now, like it's you know cloudy outside and raining or snowing, I mean, but if you're going to the beach, if you're gonna be out in the sun, I mean, throw some of that sunscreen on, you know, put it all over you. And I mean, I imagine that's probably like the strategy for a lot, a lot of us, right, in California. We don't use SPF 10, 20, 30, we use SPF 50. Why? <laughs> Excuse me, because we've been quarantined. And what happens? I mean, we, we get pretty burned right now, right? Because we've been stuck indoors. Now, the other group of people, they were told, I want you to wear SPF 15, but I want you to wear it every day. I don't care if you live in Alaska or just wear it, right? I don't care if you're not gonna go outside all day, just wear it. You're gonna be quarantined for nine months, just wear it. <laughs> wear sunscreen SPF 15 every morning as a part of your routine. So four and a half years went by. Well, that's convenient, right? We're talking about almost five years here, which is what we'll be talking about. And they studied the before and after pictures of, of the groups, both groups, and the group, listen to this, that was told to put on the higher SPF, you know, only when they were gonna be in the sun or go to the beach, when they compared the pictures of these people, the scientists and the participants looked at them and they could not deny that there was signs of aging you know, that had happened in such a short period of five years. I mean, there was aging, everyone. It was only five years and, and who would have believed that the group that only put on the SPF 15 on every, remember that every single day had no visible signs of aging. And this is in five years. I mean, their pictures looked virtually the same, identical. So it turns out, again, what I've been preaching here is that slow, ongoing consistency, right? Steady beats flared up. Oh, it's sunny outside. Let me go and let me, you know, douse myself with SPF 50 intensity, right? <laughs> Listen to me. What's true for your skin is also true of your soul. So as I circle back to where we started with, what is the face? What is the face you get stuck with? What is the life that you get stuck with? Well, it's believe it or not, what your mom told you a long time ago when you were young and, and you were making faces at people, right? Don't keep making that face or it'll, it'll get stuck, right? It'll get stuck that way. You know, there's actually science behind that. You know, you, you can grow smile lines like me I have here, right? And, and wrinkles, you know, wrinkle lines, depending on, you know, what your constant normal is. I'm always like this. <laughs> That's the life that, that you get stuck with. And this is the life that you're going to make. So let's make it a good one. What do you say? Can I get an amen out there? Let's see some hearts and some likes out there. Yes, all right. Well, listen, let's wrap up. I'm gonna pray for you and, and, and then I'm gonna make an invitation because I believe that you know the best way to start a new year is not like we started last year. It's, it's a start with a new beginning. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that for those that are in Christ Jesus, that means that you allow Jesus into your heart, into your mind, into your soul, into your life. There, there you are a new creation. You are made new because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross and you have a new life. So let's pray. God, I, we just thank you so much for your word, God. Again, we thank you for uh, paying the ultimate sacrifice for us that we can live a life, Lord, here to the fullest. You know, Lord, because you are the embodiment. You live inside of us. And God, we just need to, you know, make some changes uh, in our minds and in our, in our actions so that we can live a better life, not just for our own sake, but for those that are watching us around us so that they can see what a good God, what a miraculous transformative God you are. And so God, we thank you in advance now 
what you're gonna do five years from now. Even as we take a daily step, every day that you wake us up, that you give us breath, may we be reminded that it's a borrowed breath, that it comes from you and it is to serve a purpose and that is to serve you and to serve those around us and to love those around us that you've placed in our lives. So God, right now, um, as people are listening and watching, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you right now to just put your hands up like this as, as a sign of surrender and, and pray with me and say this, Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. I believe that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus, to die for me. I accept him and I receive him right now, January 3rd, 2021, as my Lord and Savior. Fill me, God, with your Holy Spirit and lead me the rest of 2021 and the next five years and the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That was such a great message, wasn't it? I don't know about you, but it definitely made me want to plan out who I want to be in the next five years. And I always think of it as whether we do something or not, that five years is going to pass anyways. So what will you do with it? Hey, and we also want you to know if you pray that prayer and made the decision to follow Jesus, that is the best decision you can make into an amazing start to the new year. And if you did, we would love to know. We want to walk alongside you in this new journey and send you a Bible. Go ahead and fill out the connection card and click the box, I made the decision to follow Jesus. And don't forget to set an alarm, put it on your calendar, and don't miss our next week's message, Who Will You Be in Five Years? God bless you and have a great week. I'm begging you to be kind